Hey everyone, on today's episode of Huber Hype, we're talking about mods, not moderators, modifications. Recently, Deus Ex Revision Mod came out, so it got me all nostalgic and jolly and warm and fuzzy inside, thinking about the history of mods. So today we're gonna look back and go over some of those beautiful, life-extending modifications. First up, the reason we're all here, let's just get this one out of the way, Deus Ex Revision Mod. Some die-hard, passionate team has been slaving away on this total conversion for years. I mean, I, I used to check their website and check their progress. They had this really cool infographic of what they were working on and how far along the process was. And it, it took years. And the crazy thing is, is that this mod costs 0.00 dollars, pounds, pesos, yen, it's free! It's one of the reasons I love mods. It's a beautiful thing because this game is over 15 years old now and it's made it relevant again. It's brought me back into that world to one of my favorite games ever and it's letting me relive that moment. And it's not uncompromised. Yeah, there is a remix soundtrack and some new environments, but all the same voice acting is there, the same mission structure, the same missions, the story has not been compromised, and it is just a beautiful way to relive a masterpiece. Next up, a Huber Hype favorite. It's hard to believe that this game was a mod. Counter-Strike. I mean, good God, you're taking Arguably, the greatest single-player first-person shooter in the history of humanity, Half-Life. And you're making it a multiplayer shooter. And what does it end up being? Arguably, the greatest first-person multiplayer shooter ever. This mod took Half-Life's foundation, its gunplay, its shooting, its mechanics. It stripped it of story and just went to the core basics, the mobility, shooting someone. You wanna talk about feeling the kill? Counter-Strike. Feel the Glock's bullet. Enter the counter-terrorist's head. Feel the op penetrate through flesh. It's a beautiful game. Next up, personal favorite of mine, Max Payne Kung Fu Mod. Oh, love Max Payne Mod. There was a time in my life when I was just downloading two Max Payne mods a day. Just, what is this? What is this? Please, thank you, thank you. These mods, they completely change the games on their head. They they extend the life of games you've already finished, and they let you play it in new and interesting ways. I mean, Max Payne was all about gun foo. That's how they hyped it up. You know, you're diving around with your pistols and Uzis and shotgun, blasting gangsters away. Kung Fu Mod let you be a martial artist. I mean, there were combos. You would go up and just jump kick dudes in the face. You would grab them and suplex them and punch them. It took Max Payne gameplay, gunplay, and further expanded it with new ways to kill. In a side note, there's also the Matrix mod. I mean, I, at the time, 1999, the Matrix shootout was probably my personal favorite scene in movie history. We got to relive that moment over and over again. The Matrix mod, Max Payne, beautiful. Lastly, impossible not to mention this one, the gang used to go to Cyberdeck Cafe. We've talked about it in the past. Cyberdeck E Cafe, you know, Brad Ellis, myself, some friends, Stephen Losco, Sean Johnson, Ryan Teen, all of us used to go to this Cyberland Cafe. We played two games there primarily. Played Counter-Strike, the golden age, the golden era. 
Counter-Strike, and one other little gem. Dota! Thinking back to these days, I mean, Dota was a mod. And now look at it. It is a juggernaut. Same with Counter-Strike. These games are financial, critical, public juggernauts of the gaming world. I just remember going to Cyberdeck, and we used to walk into that place, and the owner, Kevin, his eyes would just light up at the sight of us. Do you want to know why? Because he knew a five-on-five five defense of the ancients was about to go down in a big way. You look back at Warcraft 3 and that hero unit has become just a symbol of hope for RTSs. People always want those hero units back. Starcraft 2 just recently added co-op. They kind of danced the line there. But Dota took that concept and blew it up. I mean, you don't have your army. Your army is controlled by the computer. You just have that one character to control. It just took that core Warcraft 3 concept to a whole nother level. So that's it, mods. The power to extend the life of a game and to just fiddle around in new and interesting ways. Uh, they're, they're, just, they're just beautiful. Coming up on GameTrailers.com this week and our YouTube channel. Not sure if there'll be any reviews yet, but uh, Final Bossman and Ian Hink mandatory update. I am at Michael P. Huber. Uh, let me know some of your favorite mods. I mean, there's hundreds. I mean, I didn't even mention Brutal Doom. Brutal Doom's out of control. So you let me know some of your favorites. Thanks for watching. Sorry, he was cute. I may have told you not to buckle at the side of your backlog, but that's before I was consumed by the vile scum in Bloodborne the Old Hunters. If you even think about playing any other game other than Bloodborne the Old Hunters, you will die like the dogs in the street. Oh, hey man, uh, Kyle Bossman is on the stage unconscious. Do you know anything about that? Yeah, the bastard had it coming. Finally got what he deserved. Okay. Oh, uh, and there was a guy in a luchador mask walking around the office, have you seen him? What? When, after? But that means, what the hell? Hello, close talker. It was supposed to be you. I'm through with these baby games. Look for my card. Goose.